Hi girls, I wanted to make a quick video just to talk about some ideas for your discussion section of your Mousetrap Car Lab. Um, one thing I wanted to remind you about was to check your rubric. Uh, the rubric gives you lots of information about how I will be grading that uh, lab, both in terms of the um, data table that you turn in as well as your questions. So please make sure to check out the rubric. Uh, it'll give you some good ideas. So just to go question by question, for question number one, what are the two types of friction that affect the performance of your vehicle? Remember, that question can be answered very simply. All right? It can be kinetic and potential, or sorry, kinetic and static friction. Um, those are the two types of friction. But what this question is really asking is not just what are the two types, but where? Where do you see those two types of friction? You know, are they happening on the wheels? Where on the wheels? Where are you seeing uh, kinetic? Where are you seeing static? Maybe how is that affecting um, your project, right? Uh, here, a little bit more detail on friction. What problems related to friction did you encounter and how to solve them? So there were lots of places where um, we saw friction. Right? Friction happened all over the car. So you want to talk about a few, right? multiple places where you encountered friction and multiple times that you had to come up with solutions. Sometimes it was easy adjustments. Sometimes you actually had to design other things and make larger changes. You should talk about those. You know, show, you know, write about and show me how you did some engineering solutions. Um, number three, discuss the effect of the length of the lever arm in pulling force of your vehicle. So this question is a little bit harder, right? This isn't so straightforward. This might take some research. Um, and two things just to get you started, two ideas, two terms. One, you want to think about pulling force. We'll just leave that as the F. And string length, right? So that's what you will be altering. With a longer arm, you will have a longer string length. With a shorter arm, you're going to have a shorter string length. And then how does the pulling force change based on that? So you should talk about both if it is short, if the arm is short, and if the arm is long, right? Both options there. Uh, question number four, how is the balance of a wheel around its center related to the vehicle's performance? So question number four, again, is somewhat harder. That's talking about the wobble that your wheel sometimes had side to side as the car was rolling forward. So two things that I wanted, you know, wanted you to think about. One, if the force of the mousetrap is propelling the car in this direction, but the wheel, rather than being straight on going forward like that, right, that would be the disc of the wheel going straight forward. What if the wheel instead wobbled back and forth, so it was actually going more sideways. How does the force, you know, let's say there's one Newton going this way, and then a force of the wheel is now facing in that direction. What is that going to do to the overall force and how is that going to affect your car? Another thing to think about is if your wheels are wobbling side to side, we're trying to get from point A to point B. We all know that the quickest way to get from point A to point B is in a straight line. But if your wheels are wobbling, and we're trying to get from point A to point B, your wheels are going right and left and all over the place, then are you going to be going in a straight line? Probably not. Now how does that affect the amount of time that it takes you to get from point A to point B, and therefore how does that affect how your car does? Um, number five, how does the distribution of weight of the vehicle affect the traction of the wheels? So number five is asking about this question, or this word rather, traction. What is traction? So traction is basically the ability for your wheels to get a grip on the floor. So more traction means your wheels are grippier. Less traction means your wheels have less grip. So this sounds a lot like another word that we've learned before, right? What other science word in this unit have we learned about that's talking about an interaction between two surfaces and how much they stick together. So we know that that word is also friction. Sorry, phone's going off in the background there. So 
Traction is very similar to friction. You want traction so that your car can drive forward, but too much traction and you might have issues. So you might want to think about that and discuss that some. Um, finally, number six, discuss the major problems that limited performance encountered in the construction of your vehicle and what you did to solve them. So if we are talking about problems and them, we are talking about multiple, not just one. We all had problems with our cars. That's okay. Some people went through three or four iterations of their car, and that's a good thing. Right? Talk about that. Write about that. That might be a really long paragraph because you might have built three or four different cars or had to go and change your car a bunch. This is your opportunity to tell me that. Um, number seven, same idea. If you were tasked to redo this project, how could you improve it? Could you improve its sturdiness or overall function? Could you make it go farther or go faster or accelerate quicker? Be specific. So don't just say, yeah, we would change it to go further. Okay, how would you do that, right? If you want to increase its speed, all right, that's a great goal. How would you do it? If your car wasn't sturdy or overall didn't work very well, you know, like a couple times it just didn't work at all, well, how would you increase the overall function and the sturdiness, right? We want to be specific in our answer. And you can obviously come up with ones other than A through D. They don't just have to be those, and they don't have to be, you know, you might not care about acceleration, or maybe your car accelerated very well anyways, so you could ignore that one. Finally, the drawing to scale of a diagram of your car. Your car does not have to be 8 by 11 inches on the graph paper. I'm just saying use a regular size piece of graph paper, right? Um, also, we want to be able to, while it says show a side view, I want to be able to see all of these things, including the mouse trap. So if your mouse trap is set down below the side of the car, then you need to either set the drawing kind of at an angle so that I can see the mouse trap in all parts of that car, or maybe you need to draw um, from the side as well as the top. But make sure that I can see all of those pieces. By the way, chassis, that's talking about, you know, that's talking about the whole body there, right? We've got that piece of wood in between here. Right, so that's talking about all of these body pieces. So if you've got the mouse trap here and you're trying to draw it from the side and it's down below, you might have to do a side and a top view because your side might look like that. And obviously much nicer than my pictures um, because you'd be using a ruler unlike I just did where I was drawing it without one. Um, please let me know if you've got any questions uh, and please, again, I'm going to remind you one more time, check out the rubric. Thanks.